fair for everybody and including, I mean, including the people that are going to present today that we speak in a language that is uh, business friendly. So I'm going to introduce briefly what we are doing today and then invite my panel. And my panel is made up of three people, two main speakers, and the topic is as follows. So today we are going to have a very unique presentation that on this forum, uh, on my forum, we are going to pitch about study opportunities, work opportunities in, the, in Australia. And this presentation is being made by what I'm calling the dynamic duo. Evelyn Choge, she will introduce herself. And and Ramathan Kiprono, he is also going to introduce himself and tell us where he is. I've also seen that on the forum we have Beatrice Chepkemoy. I suppose that uh, she will be able to say something. So without wasting time, I'd like to invite, do they say ladies first where you are? <laughs> yes. Evelyn, um, thank you very much for being with us today. You're welcome. I don't know how how long you've been with, with my program. So just for the sake of those who are new, um, I am Serone, Serone Arab Jelule Jason. My home is in Andy Hills, uh, in the in the in the depth of the T estates. Um I work and, and live in Germany. I'm a businessman, I run my own business. Um the Sinonian group of companies where I do science contracting, so I do consultancy. Um, in the area of alternative proteins and palatants, especially for pet food. Uh, but I answer questions usually also for, for human and especially um, infant formula. Um, yeah, I think basically that's it. I'm married uh, with three children. We live in Germany. Our, one of our children is actually, uh, he lives in Holland, uh, but that's not about me today. So I'd like to go straight to Evelyn. Um, Evelyn, please introduce yourself. Who are you? I usually tell people that I am Kipkenda. I come from the B clan. So we are the people that sting you if you joke around, but you can also get some honey if you follow us uh, nicely. Uh, so who is Evelyn? Let's start there. Who are you? Where do you come from? Uh, and I'm going to ask you a bit to tell us about your education background so that you know you, you connect with your former, uh, your former schoolmates. Evelyn. Thank you very much, Jason. So uh, thank you very much, everybody, for joining this forum and giving us the opportunity to share this information. My names are Evelyn Choge. I hail from uh, Chapterit. This is uh, around 10 minutes from Cap Sabet, uh, a place called Cap Jimmy. So in fact, next to, next to home, where dad, that is home where dad is, where dad is from, we are opposite uh, a club that was actually built by Wakimbiaji. So when you are when you go to Cap Jimmy and you see the club opposite, uh, next to the transformer opposite, that is now our home area. My father's name is Pius Choge. For those who might uh, might know him or might want to know him, I was married in Nandi Hills. So actually, uh, Jason knows home Kabisa. Uh, married to the Cele family. I have two children. A boy who is 18 years old, uh, currently completing his IB diploma program at Saint Mary's. And a girl who is 14 years old, currently in year nine at uh, Light, Light Academy. Um, my background for education, uh, I'll start with high school. I did primary in Kericho, Kericho Primary School. And then after that, went to Pangani Girls, where I completed and then joined University of Nairobi to do a Bachelor of Commerce in Marketing. Shortly after, went into the banking industry, worked with KCB Kericho. Once uh, I left KCB Kericho and then joined this world of recruiting students to study in Australia, originally uh, employed with a, a migration agency called Visa Info, and now ended up opening my own uh, outfit to assist people because I saw gaps in how advice was being given to students. It was more business centric. It was more to push business and to push profits. And it was not about making the student comfortable and the parent, uh, you know, involved in the process. 
now yeah. um, thanks thanks a lot evening i do, i do not want i do not want us to dive into the business um before we introduce the rest of the guys in in the um yes. in the audience i mean when i was asking you offline you mentioned that your you mentioned your family name and and your totem um we like we like to identify people sometimes also in coquet on on you know the 3d model which is what is your clan name and uh and and your animal or your totem but if you if you've forgotten if you still remember you can tell us i mean your birth yes. family that's what i'm asking okay so what i've heard is i'm not too sure because of course um people who are town eh? but uh, i know uh, my family name is kabirokwa this is uh, coming from kapchuma kabiet mm. a bit ahead of kabiet and uh, our clan animal is the bald eagle okay uh yeah. i think though we last we last the forum if they know if they know what the bald eagle is they would uh, they could answer us but you know you went to school in kericho do you still remember your admission number for kericho no but i remember for pangani girls 2139 and i remember for university of nairobi was 20 was um University of Nairobi, I can't remember University of Nairobi, but I remember 2139. Yeah, okay, fine. Sorry, uh, it's bad manners. I keep ambushing people with questions. Let's go to uh, Ramathan, and then we'll come back to you to answer the question. So you went, you, I, I think, you know, for purposes of you getting ready, we'll be asking. So you started your own business. Uh, what was your motivation? And then the challenges you went through, et cetera, et cetera, before we come to answering today's question. Ramathan, Bruno. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, who is Ramathan? Um, and I'm, I'm not sure Alima is, is aware that you are, you're alive. Uh, I, I hope she is. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, uh, Chair. So um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, welcome. So my name is Ramadan uh, Kiprono. I come from um, Malel. Uh, family that is in uh, capsulate in Mosingishu. Uh, my background in terms of school, I did my bachelor's in uh, hotel and hospitality management at Moore University. Yeah. Then uh, Rama, for the sake of for the sake of people, you know, Maleli is a Maleli is a very powerful name. Your great grandfather was the chief of uh, yeah. Koilege, uh, yes. Location Eight. Uh, yes. And, and I think, if I'm not wrong, I think the family is Kapjip Terwoy. Uh, that's, yep. you know, the big family, the big Malel family is Kapjip Terwoy. Yep. So every Koilege person must know Malel. Um, yep. Are you the son or related to Shadra Kimalel, who was uh, Moy's High Commissioner to London? No, no, no. Uh, related to Shadra. Yeah, related to Shadra. Okay, yep. very good. Thanks a lot, Ramathan. So go on, tell us. So where did you go to school? Um, yeah. and, and then where are you now? Because I suspect you are not in Kenya. No, no, no. So I went to school. Um, so I did my primary school in um, Magadi Primary School. That is in Kajado. Then uh, I did my high school at... Um, uh, in um, in Eldoret, at a school called Kipsangui High School. Then uh, I finished there, did my diploma of uh, business administration at Jacquard University. Then went to do a bachelor's uh, of hotel and hospitality, which I did it at uh, Mo University. Then. Uh, then I uh, went to do um, my master's now. I came to Australia around, around 2016 to do my master's, which I did a master's of uh, MBA. After that, I ventured into business, which we're going to speak up today. Very good. Thanks a lot. Um... Already, you know, there are people who are cheerleading you out there. They're saying, oh, yeah, I've seen it from a city in LA. Uh, do, you remember your, uh, do you remember your admission number at Kipsangui High School? No, sorry. I've, I've, apparently, I can't remember. 
you know, for a moment I thought your your admission number at Kipsangu is your M Pesa pin, but it's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of the people who are listening to me use their their high school admission number as the M Pesa pin or the password to their email address. Ah. Oh. Guys, careful. Uh, you know that's that's what hackers usually look for. They look at what is your what is what was your admission number and something like this. Rama, if you could just move up, move back a little so that we see the whole of your torso because you somehow, um, yeah, like that. Uh, that that's super that's beautiful. beautiful. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. And, and currently you are in uh, in Perth in Australia, yeah. right? Because I've seen Ambassador yes. Ambassador Alfred Sajjan says that he's following you from Perth in Australia. Uh, I know as a Kalenjin, we can say birth in Australia. Uh, but the proper way to say it, I don't know, is path, I guess. Okay. Um, shall we go to Beatrice uh, and, then, and then go back to all of you then uh, to tell us what it is that you're doing, what is the business? Beatrice, do you have a video or do we skip Beatrice? Uh, let's keep Beatrice because she's here to take minutes. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You guys are super formal. So, Evelyn, I mean, you 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 are a typical um, you are a typical hustler. You know, you went you went from employment, um, and then now you are your own boss. What motivated you to start this business, other than the fact that you worked in um, in an environment where you saw people were struggling with going abroad for studies and you wanted to solve this. Uh, take us slightly towards the mechanics of, of setting up the business. What was the motivation, the challenges you faced, and, and what did you need? Okay, so I'll start with why I, how I got in. I remember I was working for KCB Kericho at that time. And then my father had a medical emergency around that time. This was in 20. 2012 and um he needed he needed to be airlifted to nairobi he had a minor surgery in eldoret hospital and then things went south we had to airlift him he went into icu in Aga Khan for around 21 days very costly my sister is already she's a citizen in australia in sydney and um back home we have five children so it was me and my brother at that time that were working my my other two sisters were still studying and so we really struggled to put together the funds to help my dad. At some point, we ended up asking my sister to come and help. And so when she came to Kenya, she really came and took over the situation. And we could see the financial might. It was very different, what we were able to do and what she was able to come and do. So when she left, we had a discussion and I told her I would also want to go to Australia. So she gave me the number of a migration agent. So once I sent my CV to the migration agent, he said, look, instead of you coming, open an office for me in Nairobi, run it. After four years, I'll, I'll uh, migrate you as, a, as an employee. And then I went for that. So while working in those four years, I realized that um, a lot of agents were business centric. They were looking at how they can make money and not how they can assist a student to be able to be, number one, studying a course that will help them in terms of getting permanent residency. Also accessing the most affordable courses and also how to prepare for the life in Australia, being, being job ready. Because many people would arrive and then they, they are working, whatever they're earning is not able to meet the school fees they're already paying. Remember, they've been put in really expensive courses. So they are struggling to raise that money, struggling to work. And then everybody knows when you're in Australia, you have money. So people at home are also asking for money to be, repat to be sent back. And so I left uh, employment actually tried going into something different, but then students had already gotten used to me. And so they would keep calling and I would do it as a side hustle until at one point I said, look, let me just focus on this because I think there's, because every time we would get a student visa, I would always hear the word, bless you, God bless you. And so I would be like, okay, at least here I'm getting blessings. So I, so I decided to take it full time. Now, when setting up, um, the biggest challenge was actually getting uh, agreements because for you to be able to be an education agent, you must have agreements with the universities. So getting these uh, agreements was not easy because they don't know you. You're not as big as what, what is already in the market. And therefore, here you are starting off from scratch. And um, for me, I could say I lucked out because during my four years, 
I had made friends with quite a lot of uh, admissions admissions teams in universities, you know. And so I'll, I'll just call them up and say, look, I'm starting my own thing. Could you give me agency? And then one person would give me. And then once you have around five, then every time you go to get a sixth, then they ask for referrals. You give the five referrals and then you get the sixth. And then you go to the seventh, you give the six referrals and then you go to the seventh. But then that really took a long time to get a big enough number to cater for all the requirements of students because students needed different courses in different places. So you had to have universities in Sydney, in Perth, in Melbourne, everywhere. Uh, and within quite a short period of time so that you don't lose out clients because you could, because I, I even tried going back to still work with my previous employer. And I was like, look, let me send you the student. You give me the offer letter and then I take it from there. And so there were delays because I'm not in control. And so that could I, I could say was the biggest challenge for the first two years. But then after that, I think all the God bless you really worked because then all other, you know, other campuses now started reaching out to me. I would just keep getting emails, you know, would like you to do this. Like, so I kept signing up more and more until now I can say we are now representing at least 85% of the universities and colleges in Australia. Okay, let's pause it there because then, you know, you, you, you set up a business. Are you registered in Kenya? with the registrar yes. of companies. Yes, correct. So, so you are a legal business entity recognized by the registrar of companies in Kenya. Yes, and we're okay. also tax compliant yeah. <laughs> with care. Yes. Yeah, you, you pay your taxes. We do. Um, I don't know whether you get a certificate of good conduct as, 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 a, as a company, but you know, there is all this craze in Kenya today about those things. Thanks a lot, Evelyn. I mean, the natural question obviously is, how does Rama fit into the matrix? And I, I think, you know, we can have Rama to ask answer for himself. Yeah. Um, Rama. Yes. Thank you. Thank from, you so much. From Kamalil with love through hotel industry. Um, and now you are busy creating opportunities through the... Um, the, what what were you calling the company again? The Magister Group. Yep. So uh, I'll just keep it uh, very simple. So it was a very unusual how we met with Evelyn. So I used to um, send some clients to her just to do the processing and all those aspects. Then uh, eventually we saw that there was a there was a there was a gap in the in the in the, in the industry whereby a lot of um, students who came in, came in with the wrong courses. They came in, they were, they're having difficulties in terms of getting jobs and got, in terms of um, getting the skills needed for them to uh, do to work. So what we, we did is that uh, I was able as a company to partner with uh, Evelyn in order to offer an extensive service that is A to Z. Meaning that uh, a student will be able to be helped from the beginning until they get the, the permanent residency up in Australia. So when they reach, uh, uh, once they get the visa, I'll be taking over from, uh, from for them in terms of uh, getting them airport pickup, orientation, uh, getting them uh, information about the area, making sure that they are very comfortable and make sure they got the skills in order to get uh, employment and also assist them to get an employment. That way, so what, what you are saying is basically you run, uh, and, and excuse my language if it's limited, yes. it's because I have lived outside Kenya and in the English environment for about 22 years. Yes. Um, you, you run a sort of a conveyor system yes. where Evelyn does the sort of, you know, bootstrapping of the students, gets them in Nairobi, prepares them, clears them. Uh, goes through the A to let's say Y or X, and yes. then once they board the plane to Australia, they start the X Y Z part of that process, and yes. this is where Rama is the the go to guy. Yes, very in, good. In, in Australia, are you registered in Australia with the authorities? Yes, yes. Just start, uh, we're registered with the ASIC, so that is Australian uh, registration in terms of company. We are task compliant. We have been in the uh, in the business for ten years. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
it's 10 years since you went to Australia. I mean, I, it was just the other day when you were asking me whether you could come to Germany. Uh, and and <laughs> how no, it's, time flies. It's, it's, uh, um, six, I'd say yeah. six to seven, but the company was uh, formed uh, 10 years ago. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. I mean, I'm getting questions in parallel and just reading with the, uh, you know, the, the the tip of my my left eye on on the tablet and just seeing, you know, very nice conversation with people there, uh, basically identifying themselves with you. So, you have this business. It's set up. You have two prongs, so to speak. One in Nairobi. Uh, potentially with one stool in uh, you know, one leg of the stool in Eldred, I guess, because I see numbers on the uh, top of, of your poster there. It says uh, Daima Towers, Uganda Road, Eldred. Mm -hmm. I I don't know, is that where Evelyn is based or is Evelyn based um, uh, in Nairobi or, or, or how does it work? Okay, so I'll answer that. So we opened uh, uh, the Eldoret the Eldoret branch, okay, we we were based in Nairobi originally, and then when COVID came, we went online, and then what, after the online shenanigans were over, we decided to reopen in Eldoret, reason being we wanted to be able to provide in processes for English, so we have a PTE center, uh, this is Pearson's Test of English, Examination Center and Preparation Center, also at Eldoret, we have the job skills training where you're able to do the certificate through individual support. There's actually um, those props that can actually take you through the practical training element. We're able to host up to 30 students at any given time for an examination. And given that 70% um, of the people who go to Australia are from Eldoret, we felt that it is easier for the Nairobi people to go to Eldoret for these services than all the 70 to come to Nairobi, which is what has been happening. If you look at the, the industry right now, even the British Council has opened their own testing center in Eldoret. Uh, the, also IDP has opened their own test center in Eldoret. So people are bringing the services closer to the people who are looking for that in terms of the demand and makes it easier for them. So hopefully we're looking at also medical and biometrics should also be sent to Eldoret. And maybe also now flights can go directly from Eldoret International Airport to Australia from there. So that is where we want to push the industry to. So that's okay. where we need yeah. to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Evelyn, you know, we always like to talk numbers on Cockwood because we are a science-based organization. We are fact-based. If you put your finger on numbers, how many how many uh, people have gone through your hands um, as a business to date that are okay. already in Australia? We're not talking about how many are under the process. And you can tell us both. You can tell us how many are being processed now and yeah. how many are already, um, you know, cleared and received by Rama on the other side. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. We have, uh, this year, we have a total of 35 that have already left mm -hmm. and started uh, their studies in Australia. Mm -hmm. These are people also who had been caught during the 22-month uh, border shutdown. So the 35 includes that. Mm -hmm. And then in processing, we have 191 in processing at various stages. Mm -hmm. um, many are, you know, doing exams, getting documents, you know, preparing for medical. So at various stages, a total of 191. Yeah. And then we have 81 uh, currently doing their English preparation classes online. So our classes are online at 8 p.m. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. I mean, once in a while we get questions and complaints and that's what part of the reason I am a bit nervous to host people who um, showcase products like you do is because I have seen, I think, a couple of cases in Eldred go all right. Um, with people saying we were promised, we paid, but somebody disappeared with our money. Um, and, and I don't know, how are you guarding A, yourselves, and B, the people who come to you for this service, that they are really sure Evelyn Rama uh, Magister Group is not a scam, that you are not, you are not a, a group of con artists. Sorry if I use very harsh language, but no, we have to ensure that we establish um, the authenticity of your service. Okay, I'll take that question as well. 
So what we do is um, we give you a full breakdown of the expected costs at the onset so that you don't get in if you don't see any success in terms of being able to do it financially. And also we give you at the onset which kinds of documentation is required because a major a majority of the uh, con cases that it starts from uh, when somebody is pure, poorly cancelled. So they are told, you know, just cut the process to Taju Ambele. Now that is already a problem because if somebody does not meet academics, if somebody does not have bank statements, there's no point to get this person on board. You want to make sure this person is able to get through the process. Now, the second thing we do also is we only take fees that are coming to us, but anything that is going to third party, be it British Council, uh, Emirates, uh, biometrics, medical, school fees, we give you the accounts of these particular third party institutions and you pay directly. So it doesn't come to us, it goes directly to the institution. And therefore, we just wait for you to give us the confirmation that you have made a payment. Another thing we do is we do have a pay bill. And though I know pay bills also sometimes doesn't give you 100% guarantee that there's authenticity, but uh, we do have a pay bill that is that uh, sends any funds we receive directly to the ABSA bank account that we run as a company account, so that in case there's any grievances, at least it can be taken up uh, legally. Okay. We don't we don't receive yeah. cash. Yeah, mm. thanks a lot. I mean, I would like us to go through the process because that's really important that people understand what it what it takes to get to Australia. But I see a, a couple of comments here. Um, Kush Leito says, uh, "Hello, my teacher Evelyn." Um, you're doing a good job. Looks like you taught somebody at some point. Um, Philip Moy says it's the first time for him to be on this forum, but it looks like this is only the tip of the iceberg. Halima Lonard is saying congratulations to the team. And then there is a question from Abbas Njuguna, which I think we need to take. So the question here is, is there a guarantee um, that if somebody traveled to Australia using your method, using your channel, they are guaranteed um, admission to that college, that they wouldn't end up having a problem and, you know, landing on the streets. What, okay. what is the guarantee that, you know, you took my money, you told me buy at the airport, and I said, God bless you, and then I end up in Australia and... I am like, I'm cursing you, or is that an absolute guarantee? <laughs> yes, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Now, um, and probably this is coming off the back of what is happening to the people who have gone to Finland, which I think is a different conversation. But mm -hmm. now Australia safeguards its international students because remember that uh, the foreign exchange they earn from international education is number three in terms of their domestic uh, earnings. Huh? And so therefore, so therefore, they do have a lot of parliamentary acts that will pass to protect students. So there's an act called the ESOS Act. In this ESOS Act, international students must be registered in a course that is registered for international students. So every course must have a number called a CRICOS code, C-R-I-C-O-S. This is actually a Commonwealth Register of Courses that is for international students. So you cannot just do any course. The second thing that they make sure is that all the uh, all the agents are registered. You must be uh, an agent that is registered to then to then be able to send students to Australia. So not anybody can just do it. Meaning that even if a student by themselves uh, sent an email to school, they will be directed to the regional agent of that area. So for sometimes we also get some Nigerian students because they they apply directly to school they are not allowed to process without having to go through an agent so that we don't have those challenges. And then the third thing, there's something called tuition protection. Tuition Protection Act will protect your tuition fees, but even if you paid it to that school, should that school close, then your tuition is guaranteed by the government that it will be refunded and not pro rata. If, for example, if the institution shuts down, the tuition will be refunded in full and then you will be able to go into another school, university, or college. Now, the transferring of your units to the other university is an easy process. It's seamless because in Australia, the education qualification framework is run by the Ministry of uh, Education. A bit like the way we have NEC running uh, Form 4 programs and, and KCPE, 
That is what is happening at higher education in Australia. The course is actually given by the Ministry of Education. The universities are just delivering it. The, the courses that the syllabuses is not written by any university in Australia. So therefore, that means if you do one semester in Edith Cohen, you can go to Madoc and do the second one. And then you can go to S Southern Cross University and do the third. And you will not lose any course progress. And there'll be no confusion as to where this, uh, you know, they can't say this is a Strathmore University course, so we don't know it, you have to start from scratch. So should there be any closures of universities, you just RPL the process, which is called recognition of prior learning. You've already done certain units, continue where you left. And so those are the guarantees I can give 100%. You will never lose course progression. You will never lose your tuition. And I can also guarantee that once you start the process, we can guarantee that you will get admission into a university. What we cannot guarantee is getting the visa because that is immigration department. We have no control. We don't know sometimes how they make their decisions as well. Sometimes we get shocked as well. But then we can we can we can have some controls at admissions level, but not at uh, visa level. Yeah. Thanks, Evelyn. I think we need to go to the uh, gist of, of, of today's uh, presentation. I don't know whether, Rama, you have anything to add on that? Um, I think uh, when it comes to this, the student in terms of the, uh, getting them here, so I think we are covered because the company is uh, legit and has all the, the details. And, uh, and we have um, helped a lot of people. So we're doing a referral base. So there's no issue in terms of that. But when it comes to education, I think Evelyn is much, uh, you know, in terms of that. Very good. Um, somebody is already asking us a question of how does one get to go to Australia? But before we go there, Evelyn, would you like to tell us what are the categories of people you are facilitating to go to Australia? And then we go to the process straight off. Okay. So we, we do find that... Um, um, students who have done really well in school and not saying that we're omitting them in the process, the people who have done, who have C's and, ab and above, they're normally well catered for in this industry. There's a lot of uh, agencies looking for them, a lot of universities already also enrolling them locally. But then we have the people who didn't do well, but we call those people, they're more artsy. They probably are more hands-on people than theoretical. So those are the people that we find we end up uh, helping a lot. Uh, the TVET the kind of guys. Exactly. Yes. So this is a Form 4 student who has a C, C minus, all the way to an E. Mm -hmm. We're able to get you into a course that is just hands-on. Uh, it's vocational. And then you can be able to complete that and then proceed on to higher education if you need to, if you want to. Because also there are some particular types of TVET courses that can also allow you to get directly into the permanent residency stream when you complete it, you don't necessarily have to go all the way to the bachelor's or the master's. So we look at that particular person and we see that that is the person we help a lot more. But we do have a mixed clientele. We also have people who have come and they have A's. We also assist that. We can put them into university programs. We have people who already have local degrees. We can also put them into master's program. What we've never managed to do is to get somebody successfully into a PhD program because of the challenges of getting a supervisor when you're offshore, because they don't know the outcome of your visa. So sometimes they're not able to take on that, uh, that uh, undertaking when they don't know what you'll get, if you'll get the visa or not. So up to master's level, we are able to assist. So from certificate level up to master's level, we are able to assist. Okay. Um, and, and I mean, Evelyn, I see another question which is coming up here. And, and this, thank you very much, uh, Kush. I think he just he just confirmed that he is one of your students going through your English language um, classes. And Malon Sang says one of the best agents in terms of guidance in course selection, and counselling in many areas. The Aquenda Australia, I'm one of them. So that's you know there is evidence there of um, of somebody who has somebody used this forum. Yes. Thank you very much. much. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, you're welcome. You're, you're um, welcome. Now, the, here is a question of somebody asking, is it a must that one has to go through an English test? And the, this, this is one thing that really embarrasses me as a Kenyan. When I think about the fact that we were colonized by the British, we are members of the Commonwealth, we speak better English than most African countries without yeah. the, you know, the the... 
I will I, I will not imitate anybody. Let's just stop there. Why does Kenya <laughs> still need to do an English test for for the US, for UK, for Australia, for heaven's sake? Yeah. Okay, so I'll answer this controversially. Um Remember that the British Council is actually a charitable organization and this is their mainstream of income. And therefore, they, they can't kill it. They've got to find ways to make sure that they are funded. And then the second thing is, um, and I don't know how true this is, there was a time um, international students would not complete their course. And then the reason they would give is that they could not, they could not understand the teacher. In fact, there was, there was, they would say that the teachers were speaking with their nose. And so, and this was Nigerians. And so you'd find universities would just confer degrees because it was a loophole in the admissions process. They did not, they did not, did not, did not determine if, if this person can actually speak English and if they're able to take on the course, the course uh, from, from start to finish. Now, when you look at Kenya, Kenya is actually, um, is documented as Swahili as our first language. And so, until Kenya says English is our first language, there's no way they can now say that we are English speakers. Even if we are better than the next country, in fact, actually there was a poll that was done and Kenya, uh, Kenyans are the second best English speakers in Africa. Uh, the first is South Africa, and then we are second. But because we are documented as Swahili being our first language, then the university there cannot do an admission without determining your ability to speak in English. If you look at China, the students who go to Australia to study uh, um, to study in, uh, in you know in Australia, they have to even do translations because most of their documents are written in Mandarin. So they cannot allow just a document passed without a translation document and an English. So every country has its own documentation process. And so for us, until maybe Ruto now goes and changes some things. And now we, we are called an English speaking is when we can be dropped for that requirement. Yeah. But yes, you must do your English. Yeah. And, and uh, Jeruta is asking, what if I'm going to Australia as, a, as an employee? I'm going into the, uh, you know, the professional networks, not as a student. Is she or am I required to do uh, an English test? Yes. Um, no. I say this because you're, she's Cheruta is talking about something called uh, skilled migration. So skilled mm -hmm. migration is a point-tested system. So you're given points based on certain criteria, and English is one of them. So you have on age, you have on uh, English, you have on your what you've studied. If it's a skill on demand, your partner, your partner's English, and their partner's uh, particular qualification as well. So the higher you score in your English, the higher points you get. So for example, if you get an eight in the IELTS exam for skilled migration, you get the highest points of 20. If you score a six, then you get the lowest point of five and below six, you get no points. So this is a system Australia sticks to just so that they can have merit-based permanent residency programs and skilled migration programs so that not anybody just comes in before they've vetted the ability for them to to, and you know, it's academic level. It's not even general English. At that level, it's academic English because mm -hmm. they have to make sure that you're coming into the workforce. You're able to communicate with the workforce. There are not going to be challenges. You know, having even even just small things like writing emails, they need to be able to know that you will mesh. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, I mean, I see a lot of questions are following up on skill migration, skilled migration, skill migration. So that is what you're talking about. That's what Tiruta is talking about, right? Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go because I have seen a question from the principal of uh, Labuyo in Tindred. I've seen the principal uh, Tindred, Tindred Technical and Vocational College, Abdi. Abdi Arabtion is asking a very important question. He's asking, would you facilitate for group, um, sort of, you know, group assist rather than let's say one individual coming there and then you're doing it. And, and I guess he's talking about his students. If they would like to immigrate to Australia, for example, can he organize for a group and, and, and you arrange a special package um, on, on that process as well, right? Um. I would say that would be difficult because, as I told you, people have different abilities financially and also document-wise. 
as I told you, like the 191, we are currently processing. There are different stages. Some are even family, brother and sister, but one is ahead and another one is behind because of English. Maybe they didn't do well in English. Maybe they also don't have a certain document. So doing it as a group might not, we can, yes, but might not mean that they will all go at this, you know, with the same steps. They can start together, but then you might find some are faster. They're able to give us their documents faster. So we'll move with those ones faster. And then um, the ones who are not able, also the fee, because remember at some point you need to do a fee deposit. It depends if somebody's parent is ready to do the fee deposit or not. So those are where the deal is. But yes, we can actually do. And then if his question is, if we can do counseling as a group, yes, that one definitely we can do counseling as a group. Physically, physical, maybe we can even come to the school or we can do an online session like this. That mm -hmm. is also doable. Okay. I think what we can tell Abdi, isn't it, is uh, you have your contacts there. Would you like to just guide them and say that he gets in touch with you um, through yes. those contacts, isn't it? Yes. So right. There are quite a number. Go on. Number, sorry, the number that ends here with 500, that comes directly to my mobile number. Uh, the 0721-796-500, that comes directly to my mobile number. The other one that ends with 052, uh, that goes to the office in Eldoret, which will be picked by a lady called Julie, Juliet, uh, who is our manager at the center. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they can also get through to, to you by email, isn't it, on the, uh, Correct. the, Correct. On yes. the RPL side. I see questions are now flooding, uh, but I, I'd like us to go to the ABCs. So here I am, you know, very excited as a parent and I'm listening to Evelyn and, and Rama uh, talking about the two categories. So one is you said you have, you have people who, are, who would go and do uh, vocational training in Australia. Um, Rama, you are there. Is the money enough if I sent my son or my daughter there to, to work as a plumber or an electrician or a carpenter? Do they make enough money? And I'm not going to ask you whether they make enough money to send me something small, the Kenyan, typical Kenyan language. But can they make enough money to live on that? Um, thank you very much for that question. Yes, uh, they can make enough money and uh, it's equivalent to myself. So I'll say an approximately, uh, if they work in uh, you know, aged care or disability sector, um, the amount they can get is about $30 an hour. So if you are just brought approximately, uh, if they work eight hours, that would be around 240, if I'm not wrong, dollars. So if you equivalent to um, five days, that would be around 1,000, is it 200? So that is uh, per, per week. So times two, that's 2,400. So this is possible. And imagine some, we here, we are doing two jobs. So we have uh, one job uh, during the day, sometimes we do another night shift. So they can approximately make and pay their school fees very well, and they can pay their bills very well. As long as they come through, you know, they come through in, get their employment uh, immediately, get their skills uh, set immediately, then they can be able to pay their school fees very well. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. I mean, the, um, I see the other question is actually going to somebody else. So guys, those of you who have questions, I see Ian, Ian is asking where can I get you in Nairobi? We've just showed you on the, on the top left, on the top right of Rama and, and Evelyn's, uh, you know, backgrounds, you see the numbers there. The 0721-796-500 goes to Evelyn directly. Um, please don't send her flirting messages. Just go directly to business. Evelyn, I'm listening to you as a parent or a brother to somebody or an uncle to somebody, and I'd like to send him to your office for guidance. Let's, let's go through the ABCs. What do you need? And where does the process start? Good. So the process normally starts with a free consultation. And in this consultation, we cover things about costs, the cost element, 
depending on what the student is qualifying for, remember a majority of them, as I told you, would always end up into vocational. And then we have male-oriented courses and then female-oriented courses also, and those will also play a role in what course you actually end up choosing. After you've, after you've determined how much it's going to cost you and you know that you're able to access these funds, and then we also talk about documentation. What, what is it that you need to provide? And the biggest mountain in documentation is the bank statement. At this point, we need to determine if you can access the bank statements. And remember that uh, Eldoret is flooded with fake bank statements. And um, so we normally also have to determine if they are buying these bank statements. And if they are, then we need to be able to counsel them about their ability to be banned. And you can get a ban of up to 10 years because you've given a fraudulent statement. And so we look at options of how we can help them. We, can, we have a welfare that is able to assist students to access funds. And then these funds can be put into their parents' account, a nominated parents' account, and then show funds. When you get your visa outcome, you return the funds. So this is something we need to do on the onset because, of course, there's quite a queue of people using these funds. It's a, it's a revolving revolving. Um, revolving fund model. So therefore, when pa one person uh, finishes using these funds, then you're able to take it back to another person. So there's a period of three months waiting for the funds to be available. Now, th this we want you to make that decision early on so that when you start your classes for English, it takes approximately four weeks, you're already a member of, this, of the welfare, you've already started counting down the three months. Now, once you've started your classes for English, currently they're online, we have one at 8 p.m. and we have another one at, uh, at lunchtime. We do have a physical location, but you will still go to the computer, the learning room, and still have your class online in the learning room in the physical location. So people in Nairobi, people in Kiambu, we have a lot of students from Tindigua. We have students in Mombasa. They actually are able to join these classes online without, we know we cannot open everywhere. It becomes a bit impossible to do brick and mortar in every single town. So we've, we've just focused on Eldoret as the center, but then everybody is able to access the services online. Now, once you finish your English classes, this should take you around four weeks or three weeks, depending on how quick the class is. And now with the lunchtime class, people are able to do it in two weeks because you can take one, there are four modules. You can take one module at eight, another module at lunchtime, and then you can finish this in two weeks. Then is when we go into the process of the statement of purpose. This will be your step four. You have your English result. You've given us all the documents. We send you videos guiding you how to do this documentation. What is, what is certifying a document? We actually show you a certified document. We, act, we actually have a video where I actually hold the stamp and I tell you this is how to certify so that we don't have any errors. And then you submit these documents also virtually. We have a document, a, a document portal where we receive all the documents so that we don't have, we don't, we're paperless. So we don't have people dropping documents in the office because they get lost. Uh, this was a system we had before COVID. So this was one of the silver linings of COVID. We do not, we are now paperless. Then this is the point where now we send all the documents to the school. In the documents we send to the school will be all your academic documents, meaning if you just completed KCSE, that would be the certificate, the result slip and the living certificate. If you've completed any certification, like a certificate in social work or a certificate in electrical, diploma in electrical, we would also need those ones. We also need work or employment letters if you're employed, even if it's volunteer at the church level. In case you do not have something to show for that and you don't know where to magendo it, okay, we can help you. We work with ACK Nandi Hills, Mosine, to be able to they get you a letter saying that you're in the youth ministry so that it can cover any gaps that you are trying to cover. And then you help to build the church because they're building the church. So you'll just send something for them to put a window. Now, when, when we finish that stage of getting the offer letter, something else we send to the school is your bank statement. This must be from somebody who is related to you. And the minimum, uh, the it goes as per the cost. So the cheapest cost we have currently is for tiling, you know, floor tiles and wall tiles you'll have that you're sending a bank statement of 2.3 million. That is the cheapest. The most expensive we have is nursing. And the nursing, you'll be sending a bank statement of 5.6 million. So we can say between 2.3 million and 5.6 million, that is where you're looking at in terms of the requirements of bank statement. Now, the bank statement needs to have been uh, the last 90 days that no matter 
uh, what time of those 90 days the balances never reduce below what the embassy wants to see. Once we send that to school, we get an offer letter. The offer letter comes for some schools, 24 hours, we get it, 12 hours, six hours, and some schools, three hours. It really depends with the workload and also how, how organized the particular admissions department is. But a majority of our schools will give you an offer letter within uh, 12 hours, 24 hours, maximum a week. Now, once you have Evelyn, the offer letter... Evelyn, I just, mm -hmm. want to, I just want to make sure that I clarify for our people because um, somebody listening to you is wondering, um, when I want to start, I don't have a bank statement. What you are saying is you take care of that? Yep. Yes. Okay. account <laughs> process in the for three months ko jer kora ko ko diake kirat ya ko ke buro go on evelyn i was trying to explain yes. to them that there is money the bank statement is not a problem it yeah. can be done yeah it just needs planning mm -hmm. because of the waiting period it needs planning yeah yeah so once you have the offer letter that is when you're expected to pay the first tuition deposit and this one has two payments. So the first term or first semester, depending if it's degree or master's, that is a semester. In Australia, vocational education, they would divide one year into four terms. This is for your certificate, advanced diploma, diploma programs. That would be four terms in a year. If you're talking about degree and master's, they talk about one year having two semesters. So therefore, if I say semesters, it means degree and master's. If I say term, it means certificate, diploma, advanced diploma. Now for the vocational level, you would pay one term fee and you'd pay medical cover. This is for you to be able to access hospital services when you're in Australia. And this is a one-time payment. You pay for the entire period of the visa. Most of the time it's two years, three years. Now that deposit um, also depends on this, what your, you know, uh, the cost that you have applied for. The cheapest currently, as I told you, is the tiling. Tiling, you would be sending, let me just do that very quickly. As, You'd be as sending you approximately that, 200. I see Eunice. Eunice is asking me, Eunice, how do you say that you're going to get out of here? How do you say that you're going to get out of here? How do you say that you're going to get out of here? How do you say Amu mama jesi mutai sa maningorani nga meti nye statementi uroju kweni. Inde kweni juwa ka unungeri nya ururiye ya iwe kwa kweni kyo. Ngo ka mite mo itaki tikin sinego magina yegi lagini iwe kwa kweni kyo. Ah, jagi nye. Okay, that's time. God bless you, Evelyn. Go on. Yeah, you see, I got another blessing today. This is why I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. for tiling for floor tiles the cost of floor tiles and wall tiles you'd be sending 270,000 shillings if you're going to do commercial cookery which is make you're going to become a chef you'll be sending 412,000 shillings if you're going to do community services you'll be sending 370,000 shillings uh, if you're going to do building and construction where you're going to lay bricks that is going to be uh, that's going to be 520,000 shillings. Now, nursing, masters, now the, 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 the game changes. That one now you're talking about 1.5 million, 1.7 million. And now that's at a different level. And that's why I shall say this, this thing works for people who have just completed Form 4. It's the cheapest for them. The people who want to do nursing, we normally say you can think about a pathway. Instead of going to do nursing directly, you can start with community services pay the 370. And then when you're in Australia, uh, most of our schools will give our students installment plans where you pay per month. For community service, you'll be paying 95,000 a month. And remember Rama told us you're earning um, 
Let me just do that in dollars. Rama, the earning, 1,000. The earning, 240 a day plus times five. 1,200. Yeah. yeah. That is 102,000 per week. That is what you're earning in, Aust in, in uh, Australia when you're working as a student. So you're making 102,000 a week multiplied by four. That means you're making 408,000 and the school only wants 95,000. Now you still have 313,000 for your accommodation and now Yakutuma Nyumbani. So if there are any parents in this uh, meeting, you can give your students maybe two to three months before you can ask for something because they will be comfortable to, to send something home. Now, if you look at this mathematics, if you decide to go and do nursing directly, already you will be strained because you're looking at getting 1.5 million, yet you're earning 400,000 a month. So you'll find that for you to meet the fee requirement, you'd need to have done, you need to work at least three months, three to four months just for school fees. And now you're not, you're not thinking about accommodation, you're not thinking about food, you're not even thinking about even taking a tour around. So you want to, you want to try entering with something that's affordable. Then when you complete it, it's normally two years and you're done. And remember, Australia doesn't have a retirement age. So there's no hurry to complete. There's no hurry to graduate. Just go in with the mentality that I'm going to first work for two years. When I finish working, I can enroll myself into any other degree that I want. If it's nursing, if it's engineering, if it's IT, because that is under STEM courses, they're really expensive. So we're able to do those kinds of pathways for you. Another thing that we do at the offers letter stage is we ensure that we are giving you an intake date that is quite far ahead. So for my students who are currently supposed to be doing the February intake, they're in Australia as we speak. This means that they have, like I, I have some students who arrived in July, yet their course is for February. So they do have six months of working. And if they're making, if they're making 410,000 per month, then that person starts, universe, starts their course when they have 2.4 million. So that if there's any requirement for school fees, this money is already there in the account. So we are trying to reduce mental, mental health issues and depression because it's a real thing, it's happening. I've had some of my students coming back because of, they get there and they start, they find it's too straining and they come back. Now, um, been, so you can hold that, it, hold it there. Yeah. Um, so basically what you are saying is you, I send you my nephew. The first thing you do is you don't charge them. You just have a chit chat. I don't know how long it takes, maybe 10, 15 minutes, maybe one hour. An hour. One hour. Yeah, one, one hour for free. One hour for free. Yes, for um, free. One hour for free. Well, I give 15 minutes for free. Like in one hour, I see it with Osia Pogology. Okay. So you donate, you donate your time, one hour. You spend with them, clarify their ambition, dig on the preparedness, what do they bring, um, you know, all those. And then because somebody is asking here about the letters that they need. I guess somebody will need a CV. Somebody will need the letter yeah. of purpose that you talked about. Um, how much does that cost me as a sponsor to facilitate for that person to get this level of help first? Do you, oh. do you break down the costs or I must pay you everything, boom, at once? And how, no. do, they, how do they work? So we, we, we do, uh, you pay per milestone, meaning when you get to that level is when you pay. But when we finish the consultation, the one hour consultation, you'll come out with the 12 steps and how much each step is going to cost you. And so re remember everybody is different. So if you don't have the, if you need the letter from ACK, then they'll take only a thousand bob. Okay, some people are so happy they send them 2,000. It really depends with you. And then the statement of purpose is 5,000 shillings, but that comes after IELTS, okay? IELTS is 29,000 shillings. To enter the class is 10,000 shillings. So before you start anything, you would know step one is to pay to start classes, that's 10,000. Step two is to pay for the exam, that's 29,000. Step three is to get this SOP written, that's 5,000. Step four, so at every single stage, the only thing that can change is normally to um, the offer letter stage because of the dollar, you're paying in dollars. 
So maybe when we spoke, the dollar was a bit depressed. And so we were telling you 370. When you go pay, it will be 380. So that's the only variances. But we really, really see huge variances. Sometimes even we can tell you it's 380. When you go pay, it's 340. So it really depends. That's the only time you'll see some changes. But everything else, you will get it as exactly as we had discussed day one. And then you will always know when it's coming up. And remember, this process is taking three to six months. So you do have quite a lot of time to prepare ahead. So when we start that, when you start with 10,000, you have three weeks to look for 29,000 so that you pay for the exam. Once you pay for the exam, you have two weeks to look for 5,000 to do statement of purpose. After you've done statement of purpose, you have another two or three weeks to look for the school fees payment. After that, you have another two weeks to look for the one for visa application. And then after that, now you have enough time, almost two months to look for PESAIA ticket. And I've always told the people, when you have the visa in your hand, the energy comes for looking for that money for the ticket. You will, you will call a harambe. You will, you will always find that the ticket is never people's challenge. The challenge is school fees because when you go around with an offer letter, fundraising for school fees, it's a bit difficult. But when you're fundraising for a ticket, I find our community is a bit more willing to, to contribute towards that cause. And so we surely say, worry until visa. And then from there, we, we look at it again. So if okay. I give you a ballpark figure, a ballpark yeah. figure of what it would cost you to do the cheapest diploma in Australia, that would be a cheapest certificate in Australia, start to finish, you're in Australia, you're in, you're probably uh, in one of the accommodations that Rama has set up for you, it's going to cost around, around 950,000 shillings for mm -hmm. the cheapest. For the okay. most common, which is community service, that is going to cost 1.2. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Um, I lost a lot of the comments that I had seen here, but somebody is asking, Caroline Bakita Koske is asking, can someone who graduated eight years ago um, apply to change career, maybe to do vocational course like community health service? Um, I would personally never advise that, but I don't know <laughs> what you guys do. No. So there is a criteria the immigration officers look at. It's called GTE, Genuine Temporary Entrance. This criteria is imposed on all applicants. They look at your genuineness to enter Australia as a student and leave upon completion of your course and that you're not circumventing the student visa to migrate into Australia. So they will look at the study gap from the time you completed your last study to this application. How long has it been? And if it yeah. is more than yeah. six months, then can you be able to cover it with work experience that is relevant? Meaning that if you have done a degree in accounting and you have eight years gap, and now you want to go do a master's of professional accounting, can you show that you've had progressive you know, work? Maybe you started as an intern. Now you're, you've, you probably are now the, uh, an accounting officer in another firm. You've had two to three jobs. That there's genuineness in growth of your career. Then definitely you'll get. But if you change, if you're doing accounting and then now you want to go diploma in nursing, diploma community service, it's a total 100% rejection. I will not take that application. I will not allow you to do that. But I can show you ways in how you can still go into Australia, even if it's a master's. We do have very affordable master's program. We have a university called King's Own Institute that is charging um, 600,000 for a semester. 600,000 per semester. We also have UBS. UBS is Universal Business School, Sydney. They're charging around 458,000 shillings a semester. So we, we can show you cheaper ways. You don't have to necessarily miss the GTE and then luck out. You can still go, like they actually tell people, just try and look like the duck they're looking to see. So if you're supposed to do masters, just do masters. We will show you the cheapest way. Yeah. Congo missing Evelyn. I mean, I have seen here a question from Kibli Mosum Kong. He's asking whether he can support his brother's child with a bank statement and relationship to the child if it is uh, required. Um, I guess that would be a welcome thing. Then the revolving fund doesn't need to be tied up for three months. I don't know what your answer is. Yes, you're allowed to, uh, so we call them sponsors. So sponsors are allowed, they must be related to the student and there must be evidence. 
So this means that you can show statements from your parents, your brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, grandmother and grandfathers. And then you have to show how you're related. You produce evidence in terms of birth certificates. So the embassy officer will be looking at, if you're saying this is your mom's brother, then we need to see your mom's birth certificate and your sponsor's birth certificate. They will check the name of the parents. So if in, my, in your mother's birth certificate, the mother is Stella, then they expect to see Stella also in the uncle's birth certificate. So that is the evidence they require. They do not rely on the affidavit. Even if you write three affidavits, they will not take that. They'll still want to see the evidence. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, um, we have a lot, lot, lot of questions. So there is a question that has been coming up several times on scholarships. Do you facilitate, link up people, assist them with uh, searching for application for scholarships as well? So that would be a uh, firm no. We don't do that service because it is the most rigorous application there is. We tried once, but it is very rigorous. And you find that uh, people who you have to show the, the you have to show the need for the scholarship in terms of your financial uh, background, and then if you've ever been funded before. In fact, I find students who have ever received scholarships before have a better chance of getting a second scholarship than a person who has never had before. And so it takes out a lot of admin time, and then the success success rate is very low. And remember, most of these scholarships there are two types of scholarships. Huh? There's developmental that is given by organizations like the embassies, house trade, some universities. Those ones, they always have a clause for you to come back. And so remember yeah. most of our students, around 95% are looking to stay when they finish campus. So if you're going to take a scholarship and the clause is two weeks later, you have to come back to Kenya, then you're really missing the point. The second type of scholarships are from private entities, you know, Melinda Gates Foundation, you have several types. In fact, there's a website. If you just Google opportunities for Africans, you'll be able to see all manner of scholarships that are available. Even our trade will be there. Ireland Embassy will also post there. Everybody posts scholarships in that site. So if you want to try for yourself, you can go for it. But remember that you have to make sure that they give you the terms. So you can receive, look at the terms before you sign on to anything and start early. All scholarships are given in September. They, no, no, they, are, they open in September, given in March, meaning that you must have done your English. Don't start, don't start in September, and then you're doing your English in September. You lack out. You'll have to wait another year. So in January, start with your English, prepare your English, go do your certifications, all your documentations. You can look at that website, look at previous scholarships and the requirements, because the scholarships are the same. They just keep opening. They don't, you'll never find a new one. So if you see Ferguson, it's the same one. Then be prepared so that in September when it opens and subscribe to the mailing list because you'll get an email that this is open now. Then you have your pack already ready, then send. You'd find that you, the people who've been successful with scholarship application, they do 10 applications a year. And so you need to be that vigilant. So this is the reason why we do not do that. As you can see, it is very admin heavy. We cannot take on that job. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Evelyn. Guys, those of you who are joining us now, I've seen Senge Mkubwa from the US is calling up all her grandchildren and the, uh, the nephews and the nieces to join us. Um, you're listening to a very special edition of Kokuet. We are talking to Evelyn, we are talking to Rama, and we have two guys in the, in the guest wing of, of, of this Zoom meeting. I don't know who they are, but probably they are helping Evelyn with the housekeeping. Uh, Nelly Akoth, we, we recognize you. Beatrice Chipkemo, we already spoke about you. Today we are talking about how to go to Australia. A, as a student, either interested in doing a vocational training like you do in our village polytechnics to come out of there and look for your own self-employment so you're not the kind of person who comes out of that place and you're like no you're the kind of person who comes out of there and you are saying where is the hustler fund i want to set up my own business because i'm a carpenter i'm a mason i'm an electrician i lack capital but William has promised there is going to be money, lots of it. 
Now, the second category is people who want to go and study. Um, you know, you want to go for a master's and Evelyn has been very frank and honest, absolutely authentic. She said, so far she has not dealt with anybody going to Australia for a PhD. And I remember somebody who was admitted to university in, um, in, in New Zealand for a PhD, University of Otago. Um, it, it had to be a communication between me and the supervisor. There was no way that an intermediary could, could happen. And it is the same thing with Germany. If you intend to do a PhD in Germany and you engage an intermediate to do it on your behalf, you probably will not get any supervisor saying yes. Because as a professor, we are trained to identify problem cases. If you need somebody to make an application for you, it probably means you are not qualified to be a PhD student. Sorry, guys, we have to tell each other the truth. And that's what I told Rama and Evelyn to tell us the truth. No sugar coating. Um, and then that third group is the people who are, you know, emigrating because they are skilled labor. So you're going there because you are already qualified. You're, you're doing your thing. You're very good at it. And you want to go to the dollar economy. So that's something which can be done. Rama, somebody is asking whether they can do radiation in medical imaging in Australia. It's, I mean, Leah, come on. What a question. We are talking about Australia. Anyway, Rama, would you be able um, to find a university in Australia that is offering, or a college that is offering uh, radiation related to medical imaging? Um, we can find that, but what I know is that a lot, a lot of medical courses, they are very limited in terms of they really consider the local first before they get any international uh, student coming in, in terms of med medicine, medical courses, they are very, yeah. very strict. So it's, uh, it's hard, but we can get a college. We have a college called uh, Charles Sturt uh, University that has the, the course, which we can able to assist in terms of getting application. Rama, I think Evelyn, Evelyn is projecting her screen. Um, <laughs> she's probably searched uh, something and she can share. Yes. Um, so as I told you in Australia, you have to be careful about STEM courses. This is anything in sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics. They're the most expensive. You're looking at, um, uh, minimum 32. You can see what I have here. If I scroll all these campuses, you'll not find anything below 32. Now for international students from Africa, I'm not kidding you, you are not in this range. You will struggle. You yep. need to be in the range where you're doing 15,000 per year. So this is double your capacity. So while it might be good for the name, I find we are still very African in terms of we must have a bachelor in radiation, I must have a nuclear science and all those things. Remember that I told you there's no retirement age. Enter with the one of 15,000. Do those things when you're, a, when you're a permanent resident. And it's cheaper for you because you will be a domestic student at that time. So yes, that course is available, but can, you, can, you, can your daughter or son afford it? No, they'll struggle. Really or if, if the father, if the father or mother is a, is a millionaire, they probably would do. What is thirty seven? Yes. What is thirty seven k in in Kenyan shillings? So that is around um, at eight is around three million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, a lot of the tender pruners can aff afford that today. It's not a problem for them. Yes. <laughs> so, Sorry, guys. With all due respect. I know there are genuine parents who can afford that. There are also people who will struggle. What I think Evelyn is saying is, if you are a hustler, don't go and burn 3 million when you can spend half of that to build a portfolio and strengthen yourself to an extent that you will be able to afford this, right? Okay. Um, Patrick Talam is saying, Dr. I'm really impressed by the presentation of this lady. Her name is Evelyn Choge. I am in charge of careers in one of the national, univers national schools, and most of my students have been asking about study opportunities abroad. Can I plan a virtual meeting for her to directly help my students? Um, Patrick, Evelyn, please answer him, and then we can, we can go. 
Yes, so yeah, I'm happy to do that. I love working with students. My telephone number is 0721-796-500. This comes directly to me. Sometimes you might find, especially on a Monday, it's very heavy for phone calls. So in case you don't catch me on phone calls, it will be virtually busy. You can send an, a WhatsApp message. I'll be able to reach out by afternoon because I'll be able to get time to call back. But yes, I'm happy to do a virtual meeting. I can even come and do a physical one. If you can have all your students in a hall, I'm happy to come and give some counseling. Yeah, I just want to help people because I get lots of WhatsApp messages. Sometimes I don't answer them because it really irritates me, you know. Guys, if you're going to write a message to Evelyn, like I said, don't waste time on, you know, you look beautiful, your English is sharp, I like the way you spoke. Well, you could do that, but at least introduce yourself. I am Kiblumda. <laughs> I heard you on, you know, Jason's presentation. I come from, I don't know, Matungulu. And I have a daughter who has a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and interested to go to Australia for a master's or for a job. At least provide some meat to, to, to your communication. Don't be like, hi, and wait for Evelyn from 7 in yeah, the morning. That's what in well, yeah? In fact, you find it's, it's hi, and then you say, hi, how are you? I'm fine. Then they say, thank you. And then they say... So tell me how it goes. So, you know, you keep yeah. on, you know, I need further information to be able to assist quicker. Yeah, please come on, guys. And I'm happy I've written a structure. If you go to that page there, the first message, I pinned it up there because it was totally irritating to me, really. If you want to write a message to somebody, don't just say hi and wait until evening. And then you are like tomorrow. Hi, I had somebody the other day who did me. Hi. And then I read the message. I just waited. And then he came back again. Hi. And then he came back on the third day. Hi, please help that young man. He's very sharp. So the other day I decided to engage him. Who is this young man that you're talking about? Oh, I'm really sorry. I'm the one who wrote the message. God damn it. <laughs> so somebody writes a message on his phone as a third party trying to, you know, come on. Blumda. Aramuse. Just say Evelyn. So that if Evelyn gets this message at midnight, after presenting her English courses in Eldred, she can read the message completely, get everything that you want to say, and then she will be like, okay, here is the process. You can go through communication yes. skills 101. Only enable you. Alima is laughing at me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Evelyn, where were we on the process on the 12 steps? Yeah. So we got to the level where we now have the school fees has been paid into the school. Yeah. Maybe you, you need to stop presenting so that you can present your your background uh, for the guide. Oh, you wanted to say something on this? You can go on. Actually, what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to share the breakdown. Yeah. So we are probably here where yeah. we are looking at tuition fees have been paid. Mm -hmm. Overseas student health cover has been paid. Now we are coming to the level of visa application. We are mm -hmm. saying now that uh, we have something called a confirmation of enrollment from the university or the college. And now we are able to apply for your visa. Now this fee um, also, this plays a lot. I can just put that in red because it's dollar e dependent. Evelyn, Evelyn just, just to understand, what you are showing yeah. here is not your fees. This is what is related to what goes on to, to the, the respective authorities. Yes, but we do have some fees. I've put them in blue. That is yeah. ours. Okay. That, that's what comes to us. Yeah, okay. Okay. But everything maybe, else maybe goes... you could maybe you could separate that. I would I would pull I would pull your fee on the right side. Just take it to the next. Uh, no no. Just yeah. copy copy C, copy C three and put it on D three. No, the on C three only the uh, the ten k. Uh, to go to D three. Yeah, copy C three there. Just leave it at student agency and then copy that. Put it on on yeah. Cut and and, oh, and cut. paste. Yeah. yeah, cut and paste. Okay. Right. 
And then you can also cut your C9, put it on the other. Yeah, like that. Super. Okay. So that now, now it's clear to everybody. What is your total? 60K. Right? Yes. Yeah. Plus, and, and what is going what is going to school is basically a million and uh, 300. Yeah, but this is also, you know, it plays, it goes up and down. Like if I change yeah. this, like th this week we paid, um, uh, ticket was 198. Mm. So that comes to 1.1. 1. 1. Visa okay. was, visa was 54,000. Mm -hmm. So you see, so it plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, but at least, you know, there is, there is that clear separation. So go on now. Yeah. Okay, so here we are now where we have the visa fees. We pay the visa fee and the agency fee to do the visa processing. Mm. Sometimes I do have people asking why we are charging a high amount, uh, given that um, major, bigger, bigger agencies are charging. They're giving this service for free. Some are charging 25,000, some are charging 10,000 for this. So my, uh, my explanation has always been this. We are always targeting that you're paying the least amount for tuition here. And then mm -hmm. remember that at the end of the day, this is a business. And so we're able, we need to pay rent. We need to pay, you know, salaries and things like that. And also send our children to school. So yeah. every, every time you have an agreement with the university in Australia, we do get marketing bonuses and these are capped at a certain percentage. So 10%. So if I am sending a student, I'll get 10% of the 270. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I will always focus on the cheap universities, regardless of what it is that, it, that I'm going to get. Now, as another agency, and I'm not mentioning names, might tell you free, but then they will put you here at a cost that you're going to pay 2 million or 1.7 million. So I normally say, look at the full picture. You will end up paying 1 million with us, but you contributed towards our overheads by paying an agency fee of 50,000. But if you go to another agency where you're going to end up paying 3 million and contributed nothing towards their overheads directly, you'd still find that we end up being the cheapest agency in Kenya uh -huh. when you look at it as a big picture. So let this not worry people as to why is this high or why is it being split from the original. Now, we split from the original having a total of 60,000 because sometimes, as I told you, people end up getting stuck at the visa uh, tuition fee payment mm. so we don't want them to have paid such a large amount of money yet the process is going to get stuck here mm. so at ten thousand, we will have given you services of the english classes and also accessing the statement of purpose and prepare, preparing your documents and everything would be fine so if at this point you choose to exit maybe because you don't have the fee you have not spent too much money by that time so when you're at this stage of visa application, that is when we feel now you're getting value for service because you've already gone to that step. You are able to move to the end. So there will be no, there will be no regrets where you've spent so much money and the process did not complete. Because I do have some people coming to me when they've gone to other agencies. They say 40,000 in Melala Huko, you know, 50,000 in Melala Hule. So I actually want to say, if you're not going to go on with us, you'll go to another agent and say, 10,000 in Lala Uko, but to Lipata training. So yeah. the training is free for our students. It's part of what we charge when we pay the 10,000. Now, yeah, medical okay. exam is the and, next and step. The, uh, just to clarify again. So basically what you are doing with the visa is the moment they get their visa, the, the God bless you time comes with a 50K. Yes, exactly. You see, oh, okay, so okay. We, everybody's on. everybody's happy. Even that, I never struggled to get that one. It's because <laughs> sometimes it even comes plus extra. They say cooler lunch, you know. So <laughs> yeah. Now, um, so we're looking at now you going for biometrics. This is where you take you get your fingerprints done, and then uh, medical exam where they test you for TB. Now here, they will actually do a full uh, body scan, chest X-ray, I mean. They will check for any scarring in your chest. Should you be found to have TB, you must do the mandatory treatment of six mm -hmm. months. And this will be at, be at the cost of the IOM. Eh? Now, some people say, why is it expensive? I need to go to an EA to your clinic, Kappa Karibu, 5,000. This is why it's expensive. In case any student is found to have TB, 
it is these funds that you contributed and another student contributed that pays for that treatment. And the, remember, the student is also paid for their transport to IOM to get their medicine. So every Friday, they're given money and they're given tablets for the five days. And then they go home, they swallow this medicine, and then they come back again on Friday, they take the next batch, and they're given fare for the next week. So this is why they're collecting this amount, to be able to treat any person. Who, remember, this is International Organization of Migration. They're ensuring that there's no disease that will leave borders to go to another uh, population. And so this money is used to, to protect people's borders and health. Yeah. And then now when we come here to biometrics, so if there's nothing, if there's no issue with your chest X-ray, then you can comfortably start your job skills training. Is, now the is job this happening in Nairobi? Which which part of this is happening in Kenya? So the the biometrics and medical exam is happening in Nairobi. Uh huh. This one is happening in Gigiri. Yeah. This one is happening in uh, Westlands. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then this job skills training will be happening in Eldoret. Now, I want to spend a bit more time mm -hmm. explaining this because this is now where drama comes in. Mm -hmm. So this is where I used to get stuck. After I get to this level, I've got you your visa. Now you're supposed to leave uh, to go to Australia. I would need sometimes to call other students and I go like, So and so, do you have, can you pick so and so? So it was very helter skelter. You, do, you, you weren't sure if the student arrived, if they're okay. Now, so what Rama came on, uh, we met with Rama when sometimes I would, my students would bump into him because now they arrive shortly after around one month, they realized they cannot get work unless they had the certificate three in individual support. Or uh, they're getting work that is paying them $18, but their counterparts in school are getting $30. When they do overnight, they're doing $40. When they're working holiday, they're getting $60. So they realize they need the certificate. They're referred to Rama. Now, Rama told me, look, make sure your students come here when they already have this certificate because it takes three months to get the certificate. Now, remember, within three months, your next school fees is required. So you want to be able, so we, even if you've managed to get you into Australia three months before your course, if you arrive and use those three months to get the certificate, it means that you'd have started your course and you still don't have school fees for second sem. So we want to make sure, leave Kenya with the certificate in your hand. Rama will then get you, um, the only thing that will remain is for Rama to do for you a practical training when in Australia, when you land, it will shorten that you're only doing one week for practical. And then after that now, also Rama uh, works with a gentleman called Mani. Money also they they run uh, something called Staff Search. Staff Search is a company that assists our students. Uh, their profile is put into the the portal, and then employers are now able to search and then get them for work. That process can take another one month, one and a half. So you wanna spend those initial three months getting getting your SIM card, tax file number, accommodation, go go for your practical, go for interviews, not to study. You wanna study here go with that certificate mm -hmm. okay so rama will pick from airport we have a transition transitional accommodation this fee here two hundred thousand, is budgetary it's not paid to us okay mm -hmm. it's budgetary so you so that you know so that you're just aware the hundred and forty thousand also goes directly to the college in australia you'll be given the college account you deposit it there and then this one also we can do do for you the booking we give you the booking summary, then you can go to Emirates office or Etihad and then pay the fee there. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, because somebody is asking how much the 200K is uh, in terms of time, how much time is that? Two months. That's two months. That's two months. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. With food, with food. So full board. Yes. Two months. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Dorgas, I guess you got your, your answer on, on, on this. Um, right. And, and this, this is true for everybody or it's only for those who are going there for studies? This is true for everybody going for studies uh, because the, the opposite would be skilled migration. And that one, the requirements are different. You kind of get in and there's no school fees requirement. You're just going to look for a job. So it's direct. And normally okay. you need to be able to have funds in your account, at least for the first year without relying on a job, you need to have the funds in your account. 
Yeah, but you don't you don't have something here that is showing because Linus is asking the um, the costs associated with processing skilled labor migration. Yeah, I can just do a quick draft. That doesn't take me long. Okay. Um, but the best thing would be for him to contact you, I think. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, also, Linus, that's please, important. please get in touch with um, with Evelyn because we don't want to do some you know stupid guesswork here. Um, that that will be difficult to take back later, Evelyn. If you promise a number and then later you'll be like, you know, you promised me on TV <laughs> or on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to stick out for you. Um, you. Rugu Junior Lemeto is asking, he has an ELS uh, certificate already. Does he need to do an English language no. Uh, training? No, it would mean that now this for him would be removed. Yeah, because uh, that's the same thing with Francie Geruta. She's saying, suppose I already did an English test, uh, not with you, um, and I met the requirements. And, and there was somebody else who had said he got a seven. I don't know what a seven is. So there was somebody who said he had a seven um, yeah. in an English language course. Um, so sort of, you know, for Jeruta, because she has passed elsewhere, then it means you are taking away 29K from yes. here. That is what I understood. Correct, yes. Yeah, okay. And also for, for Linus, because he's he's got the... Um, no, Linus was about skilled labor. It was Rugu Jr. who was asking about um, having ELs already. So is it called ELs or IELTS? I, you know, I don't know. IELTS. <laughs> yeah, IELTS. Eli Bet, um, you need to look at, look at the poster that is behind Evelyn's name um, or the team that is active. I've seen the team that is active on the, uh, on, on the comments there. Please guide uh, guide Eli because he's asking where you are located. So Eli, if you are in Nairobi, you better call Evelyn. But if you are in Eldred, go to Daima uh, Plaza or something like that in Eldred. But you oh, will see the address here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So also the accommodation. Remember, some people also normally tell me, "I have a sister there. I have a cousin there. That's okay. That means for you, that will be zero. Okay, so it really depends with what what you what uh, your circumstance is, and that's why normally when we do the uh, free consultation, this comes now to you. So you'll find someone else could have referred you to us, and they only spent seven hundred thousand. And then when you come, yours would be one point three. It's because of these dynamics, the dynamics that at the time you came, what course were you doing? Do you have a relative who's receiving you? If it's us receiving you, how does that look like? So we need to do this before we proceed. And the exchange rate of the US of, of the Australian exactly. dollar versus the Kenya shilling. Correct. Yes. Yeah. 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 And do you also process dependent uh, visas? So somebody is already in in Australia. Um, I know Rama was emigrating his family the other day. You know, somebody in in Australia already, um, and and he needs to get his wife and and infant uh, child to to Australia. Yeah. Um, is yeah, that something that. you handle? Yeah, we do that. Uh, we mm. also do visitor visas for parents who want to go and do graduation, also just to visit. Um, and for parents who might be in this group, actually, it's a very good idea for you to do annual visits because especially if you target around the harvest month, you're able to take a job, make some money, come back, you know, you make people... Uh, a bit envious of your life because you're allowed the first time you apply for a visa to Australia for a visitor visa, you'll be given one month and it's so affordable. Um, it is 12,500 for the visit, visitor visa and then 10,000 for us as the agents to do for you the application. And then you'll have a, a biometrics of 5,000 shillings. So 30,000 down, you have a visa to Australia. The only thing that we might be a bit on the higher side is the ticket because you'd have to pay the 190, whatever the prevailing rates are at that time. Now, once you get there, you have one month, you need to come back to Kenya. Your second application is going to be easier and faster because first we'll have all your documents. Then also uh, you would have met something, you'd have a positive immigration history. Now, the second visa would be for three months. And then the third visa would be for six months. And then from there on, you could take the annual visa. And so you can keep now going in and out, multiple entries. So you can even have five, five year visa on visitor, five year visa, multiple entry, stinks of six months, meaning that you're told you need to leave the country after six months, then come back. 
So you don't need to keep reapplying. So I find that many parents are the, the system is very smooth for them when it's at that stage. So if you as a parent want to go and you don't have a means, then send your child, then you go as the as a visitor. Okay. Evelyn, I don't know because of um, time and, and you still had something on your procedure. Do you still have anything to present on the ABCs before uh, I go no. to the questions? No, this actually, this is it uh, from okay. here now. This person is set. Mm. Yeah, very good. So basically what you are saying is, um, you know, start by talking to me, either directly or with the team in Eldred. And please be very clear because I'd like people to be very clear. Be very clear. Hey, I'm looking at, you know, going to Australia. My name is, like I said, Kiblumda. I like using that name, you know, Kiblumda from Taragon or wherever it is. Or I'm Wanjoi from Nyeri. I followed the program, super program, spoken in English. Um, people are already telling me here, you know, super fantastic English from the lady. I like it. I see Molimuk Bitogarabit. He says uh, he's very good in English. We love to test you, um, <laughs> especially for the typical Nandi Twang. Um, but he says he sees an opportunity of being a, a trainer. And he's wondering whether you would like to engage him to provide the training in Eldred. I guess the best answer I would give is get in touch with Evelyn, um, you know, directly using her number. Karoli Jemigin Jemigin is saying he has a son. He likes he likes always asking me about his son. He really loves him. John Paul, I think he named him after the Catholic uh, bishop. Um, Karoli comes from Jepkunyuk. His son is in second year. He'd like to send him to Australia. Will you provide to his son help that he doesn't fall into drugs? Karoli. Oh, yeah. That oh. is uh, Rama's question. Yeah, I was, I, was going, I was going to answer Karoli, but it looks like Rama might have an answer. So. Yes. It's not a bad thing, Karoli. It's not a bad thing. 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 Okay. Rama, you didn't understand what I said, which is very good. Go on. Yeah, thank you very much. A very good question. So part of the reason that we did the uh, partnership with the Evelyn is because of, um, we found that a lot of students were getting or going back to Kenya because of mental health, because of drugs and all those things. So the thing is that they don't have foundation. So if here, if you don't have a foundation for you to get off the track is very easy. So once the student comes here, I pick them from the airport, they come in, I, I take them to the office, we sit down, make a plan, uh, go back, you know, go through with them to make sure that they understand the uh, counseling, make sure that they understand uh, everything. They get to know uh, information about the place. I give them the hard facts of how it is. And then we set up goals. You know, let's, let's try and achieve this in terms of getting job and getting, so I keep them, uh, engaging and keep them motivated to do things so with that um i will I'll, I'll be able to know that they are okay so if in case of if they're having a problem in school if they're not attending school i make sure that um i uh, i go and uh, look for them you know talk to them cancel and do all those stuff so if, when a parent brings them through our system they should they should sit down and make sure that we will be able to follow up with them and they can be able to follow up with us if they need anything apart from the students. If they, go, they can't go to Heldering, they'll be able to contact us. We'll be able to look for the students, make sure that they are on the right track. So the parents should let assure us if the student goes through us, we will be able to take care of them. Thank you very much. And I, and I think, you know, there is, a, there is obviously a big problem everywhere with drugs. And, and it's, it's also very good that as parents, we, we play our role we will never hand over parenting to anybody else. We need to have frank discussions with our children. Um, and where there is need for help, there is a lot of help around in, in you know, different government um, agencies. Um, if you like, I see, thank you very much to those of you who are sending stars. I, I didn't know that there is something called sending stars. If you like what, I, what we are doing on this show, you can send me stars. Uh, it will tell you what to do. I, I will not use that money. I don't need it. We will just 
probably collect it and donate it to some school fees or something like that um, to help a hustler child somewhere. Um, but, you know, Evelyn, when you think about the um, all the nice and rosy things that we say, sometimes things go wrong. And I don't know whether you are free to talk about it if you have a case of somebody who has gone and failed to settle and they had to be evacuated or, or you know, you know, brought back, uh, what can go wrong? Well, yeah, good question. That's uh, important. And also uh, parents and everybody allow me to be very candid about this conversation. Now for girls especially, um, there are these uh, West Africans who like to uh, pry on our girls, especially when they've just arrived. And so you find they get into relationships. Uh, I do have cases where students do not continue with school. In fact, the West Africans uh, will, will, will push the girls to ask for money to come from home. You know, tell them you want, tell them you want this, tell them you want this, especially for those girls who have come from well-off families. Our hustlers, our kienyejis, we are safe. But people who are going to do the radiology, they're being paid for three million, they're not working, they're not, they're just sitting at, they're just going to school, coming back, going to school. Unfortunately, I have had to, two have had to come back because they did not complete their course. And in Australia, if you do not, if you do not attend even two classes, your COE is cancelled. And when your COE is cancelled, the next thing is for you to go and hear uh, for a hearing for deportation. And that's it. Then you leave. If you're not able to get another COE quick enough, you leave the country. And once you leave, you cannot reapply and say, oh, you know, I was deported. Now I'm trying to come back. That's it. So for these students, I've had to take them to Malaysia because Malaysia does have universities that are Australian and then they complete their course there. Now, some of them get pregnant. We've had a rambis for girls who got pregnant there. And remember, uh, childcare is very costly. If you don't have a spouse, if the pregnancy was not a decision made, then you find that they are, they, they're depressed, they're not going to school, oops, COE cancelled, or now they're not, they're not even able, maybe they, they're not able to cope with that information, you know, that they're pregnant, maybe the babam toto ameruka, we do have those issues. So I actually tell parents, if you have a girl child, just before they leave, take them to Marie Stops, get them a coil. Because at least the day they want to remove that coil, a coil can stay in a woman for 10 years. The day they want to remove it, it is, it's a conscious decision that I'm removing this because I want to be a mother. We don't want oops mothers in Australia, not yet. Let them first study. And because we cannot say that you will talk to your daughter and tell them, you know, don't get into relationships. They will get into relationships. And especially those ones who are going to do courses that are on a, a skill on demand. People who are doing nursing. They are preyed upon because men who were doing courses that are not leading them to permanent residency would want to get a partner visa. So they start befriending them. They get them pregnant. They start living together. You'll find the man is happy to cook and clean and drive around. And then the lady will get permanent residency and the man automatically becomes a spouse. And then after that, now you find the domestic issues start and then they split. So that happens, that is a real thing. So you've got to speak to uh, your girl child. Now for boys, um, I find it is the pressure from parents for them to be on their two feet immediately they arrive. So this one is the reverse. The pressure is coming from home for boys. You know, so there's always something that this boy is being requested to send home. I have people who, I have students who parents, as early as month two, they're already asking for them to send money home. So I would say parents, give them time. You can set targets the way Rama says. I usually tell my parents, set targets with them. I have given you the offer letter. You know how much it is for school fees. If you're looking at nursing, I've told you how much it is. Then let us start saying every week, when you make 100,000, your rent is 20,000. Rent can be like 8,000. Pay rent. And then put aside for school fees, put aside for whatever you want to do in your bachelor's. And then, then you, both of you have a realistic view as to exactly how much can this son send back home. So I have actually had a case this year of a student who came back because of mental challenges. He started talking nonsense. Mm -hmm. He just, and uh, when he was asked what the problem is, he said the students, the, the other students in his college were laughing about his pimples. 
And that is what caused his mental breakdown. He went for counseling because your the medical card, the overseas health cover that you, you pay for, you can access psychological, you know, psychiatric services. And he did go for psychiatric. He went, he went so many sessions, so many sessions, but we were unable to turn around the situation. And so he had to come back. He left in February this year. He came back by end of July. And up to date, he has not spoken a word. He's quiet. Like he's not speaking at all. He's quiet. So we had to cancel his visa and then we get the refund. Because, you know, in Australia, as I told you, your tuition is protected at any level. So we canceled the visa and we got the tuition refunded back to the parents. Of course, it's very heartbreaking for the parents to have sent a person who, if they had stayed, there could have been something in Kenya. But now you, you pushed them and now they're in a different situation and now they've come back and now it's useless even for Kenya. So do not pressure your child. Give them realistic targets in terms of how much they can make, how much they can send home. Don't just keep taking money. You don't know what they're doing for that money. Just keep selling, telling them Maliza Shule Kwanza so that they're comfortable. So when they're sending, it's the extra that they're sending. Another situation that I find is um, students who arrive in Australia and then um, they get uh, like, and, and this is happening a lot. A student arrives in Australia, we put them in a campus, like in a college in Perth, and then suddenly we get emails from the college saying that the student has, is, in, is, a, uh, is doing a course variation and they are going to Hobart or they are going to Sydney. Okay, so those changes also, you lose the money because that one is not, uh, your tuition is not protected when you go against the agreement. So you lose the money. Then they have to pay again for the other one. Sometimes there are penalties. I've had a student who has been force auctioned. Can you imagine force auctioning a student? What does he even have to be able to be force auctioned? So you want to make sure that this person understands why they have gone to, that's why the one hour is so important. If you want to go to Hobart, tell me there is a school in Hobart. We will get a cheap one in Hobart. There's no need for me, for you to say, it's okay, let's go to Perth. For you to arrive two days later, you want to change to Hobart. Or we've discussed you're doing community services. You arrive and then you want to do commercial cookery. We would have done it from the onset. So be open, be free. I am not the kind of agent who's going to force you into a mold. You tell me, I'll tell you if it works or not. And then we work with your circumstances. Very good. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing questions here coming from Linus. He's asking whether it is advisable for him to go with his spouse um, on a couple's visa, or would you recommend that one goes ahead first? Okay. Now, uh, there you normally have the things that make people go separately is because of the cost. Remember, the student health cover is <coughs> mandatory. And if you go as a couple, the math just becomes crazy. So if you're going as a single student, you'll find that you'll be paying a health cover of 160000 If you're going as a couple, that jumps and becomes 900000 so if your pocket is, is, uh, is, can do it, then you go for it. The other thing that um, you have to look at is the, the bank statement requirement. If you're going as a student alone, then your bank statement will be 2.8, 3.5 million. If you're going with a spouse, then it jumps to 6 million. So those are, those are also evidential requirements that can suppress the process. Another thing also that you look at is the course level. Master's students are the ones who are most likely to be successful to go as a couple. But diploma student, degree students can cause a refusal. And then they will say that your, your, your social ties, you know, you need to be tied to your home country. Your social ties, the balance is off. If you're going with the only person that uh, is your family and tying you to your home country and you're going with them, then you have more ties to Australia than in Kenya and your visa will be refused. So if I tell you for your circumstance, it's not possible. Sometimes I do get pushback and someone says, Bona akina amesha kwalitoka pamoja. I surely say it's possible, yes, but I'm just telling you the difficulty in doing it. So I, my personal opinion is let one person go first. And then once the person is uh, already settled in Australia, four months later, then you do a, a dependent visa. Yeah, Evelyn, uh, there, is, there is a question from, I mean, Patrick, thanks a lot for the nice comment. He's asking me to host a lot of these uh, 
types of, of uh, forums. We do have, if you navigate to the video section of these or go to my, my YouTube channel, you will notice um, that we are practically a library of uh, information. It's only that we mix sometimes we, we do blah, blah, and then we do this kind of stuff. So probably uh, a bit of focus would help us. Um, Eunice Kembo is asking about the statement of purpose because you had it in your items. Um, I guess he's asking, what is it? I know what it is. Um, yes. I guess the question what would, would be like, how does one go around writing one? Um, so Eunice is actually preparing her child. She already uh, is going for the visa tomorrow, um, okay. but she needs a, an answer on this statement of purpose thing. And it is something you can do, isn't it, for somebody as well? Correct. So the statement of purpose is um, exactly the single document that embassy, the embassy officer relies on to make a decision on your visa. Not academics, not every, it'll just be that statement of purpose is where the final decision lies. So this statement of purpose has to cover research that you have done about your course. So let's say you've decided you're going to do carpentry. You've got to explain if you have previous knowledge in carpentry and you have to demonstrate with evidence. And then reasons why you're choosing to continue with that particular course, uh, any relevance it has to your future, how does it look like when you come back home? What kind of job can you do? How much is it going to pay you? Now that information that you give in statement of purpose, they will look at how much it's costing you to do carpentry in Australia vis-a-vis -vis doing it in Kenya. And then how much you're gonna make when you come back? Is there a return? So you're able to manage, you're able to explain uh, in a way that you can say like, if I do it in Australia, there's an advantage because then I'll probably be picked over the other applicants. And then I'll be able to be paid more or work for multinational organizations, ETC. You also have to show why did you choose Australia? Why didn't you go to the UK? Why didn't you go to Germany? And then you beat down those other countries and make Australia come up top. And then you need to also explain why did you go to that particular school? Did you go to Western Sydney College? Why didn't you go to Western Australia? Why didn't you go to Sydney? Why didn't you go to Melbourne? And then you come back down now to the, um, to the research that you have done about where you're going. Where are you going to sleep? How much is it to go to your school? Where is it located? How much is food? How much is accommodation? And then finally, the information that you have regarding your student visa, what can you and can you not do on your student visa? What, what, uh, what are the conditions? So this comes to a pay, around 13 pages of a document. Because of the difficultness of writing this particular document, we do work with academic writers for our students and they're written for at 5,000 shillings. Yeah, fair price. I mean, you basically answered what I usually tell people and I've also posted it somewhere on, on, on my page on basically answering the five W's on, on, a, mm -hmm. on, on, a, on a statement of purpose. Uh, who am I? Why am I qualified? Why have I chosen this course? Why am I choosing this country? Why this university? What do I do with this knowledge after I come back? If you can answer those five questions, you basically have a, a statement of purpose. Mm -hmm. um, okay, very good. I guess, uh, Yunis, good got a image of Kelly Talit in Ibrichisimet in Ibrichisimet. Evelyn Galenobago quit. Why? I think Yunis actually comes from somewhere around Toulon. So she's uh, oh. kept, kept up so yacht. She's from around about there. Uh, this is great, very educative. I see myself in Australia. Jeb Kruy, please do. Sami Kip Kitarian, very educative. Evelyn processed my sister and three of my cousins to study in Australia. Thank you very much. So that is evidence, right? Yes. Um, that there is somebody that has actually used. Elias Tenai says, Aligongwa Marambili Westlands. See us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was I was telling Elias, please go to Evelyn. You will get, you know, reliable service. She's not going to lie to you. Uh, Philip Mway says, given that the courses like nursing is expensive in Australia, is our nursing degree in Kenya fairly equivalent to Australian? No. Um. So there's a, there are certain courses that are not uh, uh, taught in Kenya, like. Um, 
there's working with aboriginals and Torres Strait. That is a course we don't do here in Kenya. So it's not equivalent like apple for apple, but there's a conversion course. So if you have a Bachelor of Nursing in Kenya, you can go into a university and do a two-year conversion course where one year is a theoretical and then the other year is a professional course. You also have the option of doing a Master of Nursing graduate entry, meaning that you, you are not registered in Australia, but now you want to be registered in Australia, therefore you're doing the Master's in graduate entry. So both of these programs can give you registration in Australia. Yeah. Okay, uh, Willie Koske is asking, is, is telling me to tell you to share your number. If you could point again, Evelyn, because you have your number right behind you, right? Yeah. That's, that's Evelyn's one. number. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Tracy Simoto. And Tracy is saying, my girl is a teacher. Which, which course can she, um, which course suits her in Australia? That's one of those questions that I consider absolutely ambiguous, very whistle kind of, what does she teach? What's her level of education? I mean, age, if she's age. a teacher of physics, what is mm. she going to teach? English? Come on, Tracy. But I can answer that as also a broad one. Go on. You want to make sure that as we choose the course, you stay within the skills occupation list, which is actually, it's published every year by the government. So if you just Google skills occupation list Australia, you will see the full list. Now for people who have done teaching, the, there are three ways you can go into education in Australia. Number one is to go and uh, be a front front facing, meaning you're teaching, like primary school or secondary school teacher. This has been the most difficult for Africans because of the English requirement. You need to get an 8.5 in IELTS. So that one we've never gotten anybody in front of a class. You can also go into policy making or admin functions. So that would be a, a bachelor of education or master of education. And then the third one is actually to go into special education. And that's where there's a lot of growth and opportunity. So if you go to, uh, if you go, if probably you have a bachelor of education in Australia, I mean, in Kenya, whichever subject, you can go and do a master of education, special needs or special education. There's also special education advanced. Cheapest campus for that is Torrance University, two-year program. And while you're doing the two-year program, I would, I would encourage you to go and learn sign language or Braille because then you get permanent residency because then you have something that they want. And the English requirement is lower. It's 6.5. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kirwa says, I, I look very smart today. Uh, thank you. I do always, actually. It's just that today I'm wearing the Kenya Kwanzaa necktie. Uh, Tosco, where am I? PSO. Yellow tie challenge. Can someone with a D plus qualify for any course? The word there that I underline is any. Sorry, no, because you, you just need to be very specific. Mato or Tortelago, why any course? Any course is a disaster. What is the passion of this child? Imagine a lakwani. Does the child feel like I want to be a carpenter, I want to be a mason, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a, you know, an Ascari or whatever it is. Um, so yes, a D plus from what I understood from Evelyn is also eligible for immigration to Australia to a vocational course, but it's not going to be any course. Mm -hmm. I don't have any opportunity to look for any scholarship because I don't know what any means. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What is the fee for course in medicine like somebody trying to train as a medical doctor? Impossible. That would be a must. It's actually, well, yeah, it's very expensive. It's five million per year. Yeah. Okay. Tracy Simon's child. Mm -hmm. uh, I see some of the questions are going into more specific things that can be handled by Evelyn. Mm, what about the age limit? This is something that somebody has asked me. And sorry that I, I didn't quite pick it that early. Um, somebody is in the mid 30s with family. Is that person still eligible for a visa or too late? So it also depends with the education background. 
um, for you to be able to, to enroll into a diploma course, the cutoff is 27 years. For you to enroll into master's cutoff is 35 years. So if you don't have previous study and you're 28, you cannot enroll into diploma. Okay. Somebody is saying there is autism. I think these are questions you can talk to Evelyn directly. So if somebody is interested in autism studies, uh, somebody else was interested in pharmacy, please contact uh, Evelyn. Tracy's girl is a teacher of history and CRE. Uh, she teaches high school. What can she master in? Tracy, I would recommend you let your daughter speak to, um, let, let your daughter speak to Evelyn directly. Because right. I, can, I can now just recommend to you, let your daughter go and study Islamic studies. It will not work, you know. Metela kwet kungal also age balini jege pa vinda agenge oi gogo shin. Good guys, let's go on closing remarks because these questions are just coming. And like I said, if you are happy about what is going on on this forum today, doesn't need to be every day. Just click there, send stars, send us two hundred stars, seventy five stars, twenty stars, fifty stars, whatever it is that you want to send, we will be. Um, absolutely happy. Um, Evelyn's team is also, and, and Ramathan's team is also busy answering your questions. So I would still encourage you guys who are doing it on the chats, please go ahead um, and, 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 and do it. Uh, Evelyn, if, if I have a, a sister or a sister-in-law who is um, a graduate of an ECDE college, and you know now they have problems with the counties. Eh? You know, for you to to be employed, you need to know somebody. Masik Blagat is asking, um, was that Mercy? There was somebody there who was asking. I think, yeah, there was somebody asking about ECDR. Vicky Chips is asking, can somebody with a degree in ECD uh, get a job there? Uh, not directly. Um, you still need to do the skilled migration uh, pathway. And that would need you to get anything that you're front facing an Australian citizen, you need to have an 8.5 in English. And as I said, this has been very difficult. So you'll find that the reason why most of the people will still end up having to go as a student is so that they can go into courses that has a lower English. Like for her now, I could probably send her to do the Master of Education in Special Needs so that she can go into a lower cadre in terms of the English, English class. Yeah, uh, Evelyn. Somebody asked, "What is what is the what is the time required? Or, or is there a window allowed for somebody to apply in Australia? Or is it is it like I mean, here in Germany, you have uh, you have you have spring, you no, know, you have you have winter semester, and you need to apply if you are within Germany. The last day of application, I think, is around March fifteenth. Is there like a limit on when somebody can apply for these things? Yeah, okay, so for the diploma courses, vocational, we have intakes every month. So there we are able to play around with which month you'll get in. So we just count four months ahead, then we book at that particular intake. But then you can keep deferring because it's every month. But degree and master's is February and July. And some specific campuses have an October, November intake, but it's limited. So you'd say majorly uh, February, July for master's and degree, and then certificates, diploma, advanced diploma is monthly. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Let's, let's go through your contacts again, just in case somebody is out here and thinking, how do I get in touch with these people? Please guide them and then we go to wrap up. Uh, how do they yes. get in touch with you? Okay, so for... For people who want to speak with me, uh, I'm based in Nairobi. So the contact is 0721-796-500, comes directly to me. The number above goes to our Eldoret office, uh, managed by Juliet. Uh, if you call her, she'll also be able to give you assistance. Uh, I'll allow Rama to give his Australian number. Or let me read Austral Rama's Australian number. I have not crammed it. You can write it on the, just open that Excel file which you had and then you can type it directly. Or you can open oh. a blank, open a blank. I think there is a white, there is a white thing in here. You can just click share and then you click uh, whiteboard. Do you see the whiteboard? Yes. 
Yeah, just type it there on the whiteboard. Just share and uh, yeah, like that. Uh, Ramasan Gibruno, right? Yes. And Rama, you are in Perth. Yes. Because somebody was asking us um, whether there are universities in Perth that you can link them to. Yes, I'm in Perth, so I can, I'm able to link them to universities in Perth. That is no problem. Fantastic. Go on. So read your number and the email address just in case. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, architect Nick T. Rob Koech. Very informative. I hope our people are taking notes and making follow up calls. Like in Gale Ning and I have told you guys before, she done a banandi did go eat and when you're so muclean. Gale Bon, a laquana. Oh, I'm where I meet that why? Eh, hey, we. Kaja is only on a large in it. Maratatu. Kondele jini jitap ke yo rani ki nagi sabi ngi mite Australia wale no barwa la kwa na tos nyoga ita muta nyogo tu nevali nzo ko komiu ta negitio. I didn't say anything. <laughs> so these are your numbers. Contacts for um, Rama. Please, guys, if you are introducing yourself, just introduce yourself. Me we jogger ya kinji talk leji poop. Hi. <laughs> no, just start. Hello, my name is. I am from. I have a KCSE. I have a you know a diploma. I have a first degree, and I would like to go to Australia to study. What is it you want to study? medicine in Australia. This material effect is really going to kill us, eh? Because we expect somebody else to tell us what is good for us. Anyway, um, so those are your contacts and the email address, I think, was also there, right? RPL. Yeah, I, but we. I, I got to know what RPL is. Recognition of prior learning. Yeah, yeah. We prefer WhatsApp actually because um, we're able to, like, like in my, what, what I've realized, maybe you can also talk about it in your show, you know, the ability for people to know how to communicate. You find um, somebody, and also being patient with the process. Someone could try and call me. They can't get me on phone because I'm probably talking to another parent. And then they keep trying, they keep trying. So I have a message that says, please send me a text on WhatsApp. I'll get back to you. So the expectation is that you, I will get back to them immediately. Sometimes I'm not able to. But when it's in WhatsApp, it's very easy for me, even when I have on downtime, I can now be able to send that message to you. And it's recorded so that now... Later, someone will tell you, but I really wanted to talk to you because I prefer talking. Now, my experience is that when we talk, we are discussing costs, we are discussing names of universities, names of colleges. You will not catch them in your brain. It's impossible. So what will happen is I will keep talking to the same parent Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, repeating the, the costs, the steps, everything. But if it was on WhatsApp, you will just be able to go back to it and see I've outlined it. So when I ask you to move to WhatsApp, it's not because I don't want to speak with you. It's because I know it's the most efficient way to send this information to you. And for you to have that library with you wherever you go, you can be able to check if somebody else needs that information, especially students who come to me, they want to go talk to their dad and their mom. You have it in WhatsApp. It's easy to show. It's easy to forward. But if it's on phone, I really don't like it on phone because I find the repetition element, sometimes even in a day, four times. And then after I finish talking to the mom, the dad will call and then repeat everything again. And then sometimes even the grandmother. So <laughs> it's better when, we do it, better when we do it on WhatsApp. Yeah, I, I yeah. agree. Thank you very much, guys. I mean, I don't know. Rama, do you have any last reflections on this? Did Evelyn leave out anything from her excellent presentation? Um... No, I think so far so good. We captured the A to Z. We've captured uh, everything. But what uh, I want to assure is that uh, we offer honest service. We have uh, testimonials. And uh, um, back here, I, I, I do my best to be able to help them get, uh, you know, uh get into the the industry get uh sit, sit down make sure they have everything so i'll say that we have a comprehensive um service that they can 
keep assured that we'll be able to take care of them. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. And and Rama, you are there with family is because somebody was asking me uh, when I asked you about the costs of somebody with a, a vocational uh, training. Yes. Uh, is that money that you showed, is it yeah. enough to support somebody's, um, you know, uh, upkeep in Australia? Um, I say for the for the moment, yes, it is. But, uh, you know, also with the economy at the moment is a little bit tricky. Uh, things are expensive at the moment, but uh, there are details of how we can be able to, you know, show them where, how they can be able to survive, their, their tips that they can be able to survive, their shared houses. There are a lot of uh, things that we can be able to help. It's just not, uh, since it's hard now, it's, we cannot do it. We are all surviving, but we will be able to show them the right structure and the right way to be able to achieve all those okay good and please guys when you go abroad just remember your brother your sister your cousin your uncle is not there number one number two you are not waking up every morning just chasing that animal out there to go and milk a cow you rely on the supermarket that's your that's your gabungu that's your cow that's your dairy that's everything so Kabindege <laughs> Evelyn, um, I know you have you have nearly a court. I don't know who she is or who he is. Uh, somebody came there. Nearly, do you want to say hi? Jaber. I think she's hi, a yeah. student. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Nelly. What are you doing um, at at Magister? Okay, I was connected here by my friend Rema. Yes. Yeah. You are going through the process of uh, emigrating to Australia, right? Not yet. I just wanted to know more about it. Did did the show pen benefit you? Yeah, so much. Fantastic. If you have any questions, please get in touch with the team in Eldred or, or Evelyn directly. Yeah. Okay. Pleasure having your company here. You too. Thank you. I saw that Beatrice ran away. I must have. Uh, scared her <laughs> guys uh, Evelyn do you want to say you know your wrap up uh, comments uh, Alima is saying God bless you so you can imagine you're getting a lot of God bless you's today eh? you, I live off it like I can't even cross the road without checking <laughs> yeah it's it's been great having you Evelyn I'm super impressed actually you know you are very eloquent um, very clear on your communication, very structured. All I can do is to wish you well because it looks like you are part of the girls I've been talking about, Jeb Keegan, Jeb Amuren, you know, the, the, the woman that, that should um, basically be admired by, by every young man. Um, and I was, I was remembering what you said, that a lot of people really bring children and they sponsor them and help them. And you are being very frank and honest with parents to tell them not to over push their children. And I think that's really uh, something that doesn't come out of nowhere. It must have come from your own experience as a person, you know, interacting with people who went through these difficulties. Um, and, and what we do on my show is to create opportunities, to create the links, to allow people to you know, access these opportunities for no fee. I didn't charge them anything. Um, and, and I don't intend to, because to me, this is part of giving back to society to open up the, uh, the knowledge and allow you guys who are listening to us, the over 150 that were following at one time to really access these opportunities. If you have any feedback from the way you are treated by Evelyn's team, please get back to me. Let me know. I might be able to, 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 you know, follow up with her.
if you have some nice comments, leave comments for, for us on, on the show. Um, if you've had an experience with them and you had a breakthrough, it would be great that others learn from, from you know, your experience with them. If you have something that was not very good and you know it is, please don't tell us, go and tell Evelyn directly. That might help her because I guess she works as well on feedback, right? Correct, yes. Otherwise, we welcome everybody. I mean, if you guys still have uh, an opportunity next time and you want to come back here, we switched today to a very uncomfortable language for me. I usually do this, uh, you know, this show in, in, in Nandi, yeah? because uh, I mean, my languages are almost jammed in the brain, but I think we did a good job, isn't it? Yeah, we did. Yeah. I, would, I would have passed my IELTS if I did it. Yes, you know? you'd have a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any wrap up and then final reflections and then your contact details and basically wish you luck and God bless you, right? Evelyn. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Now, for me, I have nothing much to say. I'm happy to um, to answer any questions directly on WhatsApp. Karibu sana. I'm, I'm going to be in Eldoret from the 20th to 26th. Uh, so I'll be sitting in the center, Daima Towers. This is ground floor opposite Harambe Sako. So if you want to meet me one-on-one, -on -one, we will be there with Ahmed. Ahmed is our Nairobi manager. Uh, we'll be there for that whole week. Please come talk to us. You know, let's meet. Let's have lunch together if you are free. And then we see how we can work together to assist you or your loved ones to go to Australia. Yeah. Fantastic. And guys, this video will be available right here on, on this page. I'm also going to convert it to a YouTube uh, video and it will be shared widely with um, Evelyn and, and Rama so that you can publish on, on your channels. I think it was a good thing that we also got the 12 points that are there. If people forget about it, they can always go back to the video and they will see it on Evelyn's and Rama's background. Yes. Shall we say... Um, I don't know what Ramazan would usually say. Assalamu alaikum when you want to say bye. Shalom. <laughs> if you say shalom. Yeah. And Ramazan? We said ma salam. Ma salam. And in Nandi we say gunet kunilale. <laughs> Ciao. All right. Okay. Good yeah, night. Thank you. Yeah. Good night.